So they've just announced the upcoming weapons and this includes the full details for Risley's signature weapon, Cashflow Supervision. And it's very similar to Nervilet's signature Tome of the Eternal Flow, which is still up on the current banner. And as we all sadly know, Klee has never gotten a weapon buff since the game's release. And most people are still using 1.0 weapons like the Widsith or Lost Prayer. But these new weapons might change things. And whilst there's still a few days left on Nervilet's banner, and a lot of people might be wondering which weapon is stronger, this weapon, or, or should you wait a few more days for the next weapon, or even if you shouldn't get either weapon. Well, I've actually done some calcs. First of all, as we can see, Tome of the Eternal Flow has low base attack with high crit damage which is nice and its second substat is HP which unfortunately this only increases the damage for Nervilet. In comparison, Cashflow Supervision has higher base attack with lower crit, this time giving crit rate. And generally if you're a character like Klee and you play them with Bennett who already gives lots of attack, then this ratio of high base attack, low crit is actually generally worse than low base attack and high crit. Still, this is one of the only catalysts to actually have a useful second substat and this time it's giving 16% attack. And this is very nice because usually we don't get catalysts that have that. Like Lost Prayer gives movement speed here. So let's get into the main part of this video which is that both weapons have these passives which are locked behind increasing or decreasing your HP. You see Eternal Flow has that mechanic and then Catra Supervision has this mechanic too. And as you can see in my calcs, the way that they balance these weapons, if Klee isn't able to increase or decrease the HP and she gets zero stacks on both weapons, then unfortunately these weapons are just stat sticks, so it isn't actually better than the old 5 stars like Lost Prayer or Kagura's. They're all about just 1% better than getting unlucky on the Wood Sith. And unless you're playing Burgeon, getting more stacks, you have to rely on pure RNG and getting hit by enemies. So that's not the most reliable thing. However, here's the question. What if she could automatically increase or decrease her HP and she was able to stack these passives? Then as you can see, it's a completely different story and these weapons are starting to look really good. And I think there's actually a good chance she can do this in the future. So we are in Fontaine and so far there's been so many hints with all these new DPSs like Lini or Nervilet, both decreasing and then increasing their HP as well as a bunch of weapons scaling like that too and even this amazing artifact set which gives you a ton of crit rate if you're able to utilize that mechanic and this artifact set is actually so overpowered and the smoking gun about some of those character kits are and I think many people might have realized this already, but both Lini and Nervilet lose an amount of HP and then gain back basically the same amount of HP. It's all basically net neutral. And aside from being risky to play as you lose HP, the increasing and decreasing didn't actually really do anything besides let them utilize these new artifacts or weapons. So to be honest, it's clearly a gimmick which is designed to synergize with other things. So hopefully, as you may or may not know, my channel obviously does not cover leak content. However, I do like making videos predicting or theorizing future kits based on where I can see clear design space for in the game and future releases that I think could make perfect sense in the game. And in this case, I think it's so obvious that this year there is either going to be an upcoming artifact set or more likely a few support characters which affect your HP and they let old characters utilize these new mechanics. I also wouldn't be surprised if future abysses directly damaged and heals your characters too. Sort of like you might remember when Raiden first released and, and the abyss alternated between letting you generate a lot of energy and generate no energy at all. And last year they made new Dendro reactions and this let the community make new teams with both new and old characters. So if Fontaine's new mechanic this year is, is the increasing and decreasing HP thing, then Hoyo obviously aren't going to limit that to just new characters only. 
well, mostly new characters and then I suppose old characters like Hu Tao or Xiao or Bloom and Virgin recall damage? I don't think so. I think instead Hoyo would want the whole community to engage with their new systems and evolve their teams. Now we already know that they announced that Farina and Charlotte are coming next patch. As we know, most of the Archons are supports and they really try to get Archons playing in a lot of different teams. So I think there's a huge chance that Farina is going to engage with this HP increasing and decreasing mechanic. Potentially Charlotte 2 for Cryo teams. I also had a lot of different Pyro support ideas for my previous video. So, so there's a good chance that other supports will come out for different elements that will make you lose and gain HP. Like we already know that Navia is Geo, so potentially she is going to do an interesting thing and open up Geo teams more. So if you are willing to gamble on this mechanic coming into the game and Kali being able to build a bunch of stacks, then we can see with stacks that these weapons do become upgrades over her previous options. With Eternal Flow being slightly stronger in my calcs, since this extra energy generation, which means that Kli can need less energy recharge and she can instead focus more on damaging substats. And if you can't benefit from this extra energy, then it will be slightly weaker than cash flow. Now these calcs here are with Bennett and his huge attack buffs, which does devalue the huge attack you get from this weapon. And I can quickly show you what happens if I remove Bennett's burst buff. So if I remove this 1000 attack temporarily, but I'm not going to remove Pyro Resonance and you can see that cash flow goes up a lot in value and it's even slightly better than Eternal Flow in these calcs here. So this could be another factor too. If you do want the best weapon, you'll have to gamble on whether a new support replaces Bennett in the team or they play alongside Bennett. Overall, as you can see at the moment, I wouldn't recommend getting either weapon since with zero stacks or even low stacks, they're still weaker than the Widsith. But if Kli can build stacks in the future, then they will both be strong. There's also another factor, which would be amazing if this happens, which is which is if Kli can end up utilizing the new Hunter artifact set. Me personally, I decided to get Tome of the Eternal Flow. After doing these calcs, I just got it from the current banner since in my calcs it does have a higher ceiling and also the extra HP is helpful for improving Klee's survivability. This obviously won't be accounted for in a spreadsheet like this, but if she is automatically losing HP, then I wouldn't want her to get one shot. You can see with the weapon, I've got 18k HP. And then if I switch to Lost Prayer, I have 16.5. So it's a small upgrade, but it still might be useful. Also, if a future support scales with how much HP they took from Klee or healed her, then having slightly more HP would be beneficial there too. My last thought process in general is that high crit weapons are usually more universal, even without factoring Bennett. If there's more HP or defense scaling catalyst characters in the future, then they would prefer this more than cash flow. And cash flow is very much focused on attack scaling DPSs. Finally, I do want to compare the weapon banners themselves because when you do pull a weapon, you always do have to factor in what else you can get in the banner. So for the five stars, cash flow and Elegy being a good support weapon and Tome and Staff of Homer being a decently popular polearm. I think in, in regards to the five star weapons, there is no clear winner and you'll know whether your own account prefers Homer or Elegy more. There's not really a universal answer to that. As for the four stars, Favonius Lance is always really nice. And I covered the new sword Doc Hands Assistant in my previous video. And even if you're unlucky like me, even just getting one copy for Nilu is good. And it will be an upgrade over other weapons if you don't have her signature. The rest of the four stars are pretty niche. This Claymore, I don't really know who uses it yet. And then with the upcoming banner, this bow and polearm, these are both in the same series as Doc Hands Assistant, giving you buffs depending on the healing that you receive. But they both give attack instead of HP, and I don't think that makes these anything special, at least with the current characters, since the main reason this sword is used is because of the HP substat and it gives you a bit of EM. Whereas these other new weapons should have more competition 
with current options. If anything, I just find it more interesting that there's more and more weapons based around healing. It's just even more signs that Fontaine's system revolves around losing HP and gaining HP. And overall, I think I might recommend the current banner more. Especially as the main thing is deciding between the signature weapons and and Tome of the Eternal Flow is looking a bit stronger than Cash Flow, at least for Klee. But even with stacks, they're not going to be huge upgrades over getting lucky with the Widsif. So you definitely don't need either. Thanks for watching the video. I hope this helped Klee mains decide if they want to go for the new weapons or not. Obviously, a lot of this is based on speculation. So nothing's guaranteed, but I think there's enough signs to say that Klee will be able to utilize these passes better in the future. And thanks for watching.